Hey team, welcome to another episode of the Rugby League Lounge weekly show. And once again, I am joined by Joel from League of Inches. How are you today, my friend? Oh, not too bad after a defeat, but yeah, getting getting going. It's state of origin time now, so uh, let's let's get going. Yeah, now state of origin is a good little reprieve from club footy for a bit. Even you know, especially if your team's probably not travelling as well as the Eels have been the last couple of weeks. I honestly don't think you have too much to worry about, but probably origin might have come at the right time for you guys, and probably the, one of many teams that can relate. So, yeah, today I'm just going to explain what we're going to get to. So we're going to talk state of origin today, but we're going to kind of, we've got two weeks to it kind of kicks off. So, or well, a week and a bit. So for next week, we'll probably do a preview. I'm not too sure if Joel will be on, but if he's more than, more than happy to if he wants to. And, but today we're going to look at the lineups and kind of looking at it from a three-year perspective. Now, what I mean by this is, we're kind of going back to game one, or should I just say the 2018 series, looking at the names in that lineup and then and then looking at this team, thinking who's still there, who's not there, who's there today. Did we think they were going to be in the 2021 side if we cast our mind back to 2018? So it was looking at the 2021 Origin team from a three-year perspective. Hopefully, you guys kind of get the gist of it as I go through it. It's one of those things I've been thinking about doing for a while. And, yeah, just trying to near. I probably, for the for future content, I'd love to do more of this kind of celebrating success. I love these underdog stories, especially, like, there's going to be a couple players on here where you think, gee, was no, three years ago, I would not have seen him in the origin. And I know for a fact, three years ago, there's a couple names that I didn't hadn't, hadn't even heard of. So... Are you ready to get in the way, Joel? Let's, let's do it. Very ready. So we're going to get into the New South Wales team. And we're going to, first off, I'm going to name the 2018 game one side, which was James Sinesco at fullback, Tom Travojevic as wing. You've got the centre pairing of Mitchell Roberts out of car. Halves, you've got Maloney and Cleary. Two Pampers in the halves, and we'll obviously get to that shortly when we talk about the 2021 lineup. We've got Klima, Regan Campbell Gillard as your front rowers, Cook at Hooker, Corner, your captain, um, paired by Tyson Frizzell in the back row with Jack DeBellin, who has funny enough just made his you know his return back to footy. Um, he was in the first team position on the bench, Paul Vaughan, Jake Vojevic, Angus Crichton, and Tyrone Peachy. Now from this lineup. We've got Teddy, Turbo. We've got five of the seven back line in, today, in this lineup still there today. So this was also to mention, this was kind of the start of the new era, the baby blues. So obviously you've got Teddy, Turbo, who's now shifted to the centre, um, who will be partnering Mitchell this weekend, or next weekend, I should say, or next Wednesday. Josh out of car, Nathan Clear. So five out of the seven back line. Now, out of those five, are we surprised by any being in today's, in this year's um, origin team? I'm probably, if I look at it, I'm probably not surprised that these guys are still still there considering the age at the time. Like we said, the baby blues and Teddy was probably the best player in the game then and arguably top three player in the game now. 100%. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, and obviously making up that, we'll just go through the, the ones that add into that back line that are um, in today's and this year's team, Jerome Lua and Brian Toe. Now, most notably, they're both Panthers. They're also both Samoan representatives. Now, I think this is easy. What have you expected Brian Toe and Jerome Lua to be in the 2021 Origin team if you're looking at it from 2018? You wouldn't have even known who Brian Toe was. And Jerome Lua was probably um, around the cusp of, I reckon, what, New South Wales Cup back then or something. Um, maybe in and out of first grade here and there with injuries. He was probably actually getting ready to play for the Panthers that week for Origin, um, so with clearing that being out. So um, that's probably a good way. I guess if you're looking at it with players, that is there any surprises? I think the only surprise would be that Latrell was able to come back from adversity and come back and 
and be back in the side now. I think a lot of his doubters out there, a lot of his um, critiques have been uh, mentally he's not very strong and he just does sort of what he wants. But I think this proves that Latrell's actually turned a corner and I think he's right up there before he's got, oh, he obviously had his few weeks off. He was up there for mine as one of the form players of the comp. So um, it's good to see that he, he after, over three years, he's had quite the journey uh, and he's really fitting in now and, and ready to go. I think he's going to be a superstar in this series. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Like, and Tommy Turbo was the only other one not to have played in 2020. And yeah, like, yes, and his was due to, to an injury problem as well. So yeah, Latrell, like, you know, obviously if we just, if we just completely just didn't look over 2019 and 2020, we're not surprised. But what has happened during that journey, yeah, he's done very well and it's a huge credit to him. And um, yeah, like we said, the other the others other than Tom have steadily been a part of the fixture. And it's funny, you know, former Pant for Maloney was there and Jerome Lula is now there. Like you said, probably only getting his he debuted in 2018. So he was only getting his first probably crack in first grade. And a little bit I remember about Jerome Lula. I was excited because we kind of went for a period of pay, a period of time there where we didn't really see too many running creative halves or we thought it was kind of a dying breed and every Haas was, you know, kind of going for the ranks, preparing a lot of playing structure. And I remember little snippets from Jerome Luai. He liked to take it. He liked to, you know, be a bit flash for fit, um, footwork. And now, and we used to see it. And in 2019, he was kind of got little glimpses when he'd come in for Maloney. But the same thing. But now he's able to be flash, be a magic man. And play at a high caliber level. And I think he was leading lead the league in try assists last year and currently might be leading there this year as well. At one stage, he definitely was. So, yeah, no, it's terrific to see. And Brian Tao, like you said, made his debut in 2019. And um, yeah, just and very, you know, I would have had Tupo on my side, but I think Toe is the form wing of the comp. I would have just had. Too bad because I don't think he's done anything wrong and I like the height advantage. But to celebrate Brian Toto to making his debut in 2019 to be playing Origin Footy, we wouldn't have guessed it. And I don't think he would have guessed it either. Um, we'll go to that four pack and Clemmer and Campbell Gillard. Both two props, if they were named in New South Wales team this year, would you have been surprised or not? I probably would have been surprised. Not based on form, though. Yeah, yeah, Karen. No, not, 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 not based on form. I think actually Reed and Cam Gillard was hard done, but I actually think he should have been in the side. Uh, I actually think the last few weeks he's been better than Junior. Um, mm. And that's obviously coming from a para fan myself. But yeah, Regan's, I know Junior's got a much better skill set, um, but Regan just doesn't stop. And I think Clem has been really strong this year. His numbers have been great, but just for some reason he's on the outer when it comes to the um, Blues squad. And, yeah, I don't, I don't really know why. But, yeah, you could arguably put both of them in the squad this year and have them starting and I reckon they'll do, do a job. Well, in different jumpers in this year too, so a doggy for Clemmer and a pant for and Regan Campbell-Gillard, I think they're both playing better form now. Clemmer, I kind of didn't even put in the mix this year for Origin just because there's, there's definitely... A bit of tension there with the new. The, we kind of heard a bit last year. Um, Campbell Gillard, there was a little bit too. Like, did he want to be there? So, um, I I think I agree. I would have had Campbell Gillard in my team. I think even though we're seeing a lot more mobility and smaller players, I think you need. I would love to see the size and it, and he has mobility for a big guy, and he has that arm that he can get free if need be, and a bit of a this aggression. I think he would have provided another element that I don't believe is currently there for New South Wales. So it's funny because they're not on the team, but they are probably playing a good enough level to be in that team. Corner, corner, Fazel. Now Fazel and Corner probably would have been there. Probably would have been there. Um, obviously, the season in the injury for Corner, or probably see him at the start at the end of the season. And Fazel ruled out just um, days before before um, or just not even days and probably an hour before the teams were announced. Um, yeah. So replacing, oh, as you go back to the front row. So replacing, like you said, replacing Clemmer and Regan Campbell-Gillard was, is, um, 
Jake, Jake Trevojevic, who's gone to the front row, who was originally in that team. And also, who's the other front row? Safiti, who's funny enough, the front row partner for um, Klima at club level. For Safiti, don't think I would have thought he would have been there um, a couple yeah. of years ago. He is an interesting one because if I'm being honest, I'll probably rate Clemmer ahead of him at the moment this year for the Knights. Um, I know he did play pretty well over the weekend, but he's a weird one for mine. I just, I don't know. I don't want to be too harsh. Obviously, he's doing well to get to that level, but he's just a forward that I don't really rate. Like, there's just plenty more props for New South Wales that I probably would have had there. Um, but happy to be proven wrong, and I'll support, obviously, anyone who, who dons that blue jersey. Well, we talk about you talked about the journey of Latrell Mitchell. We'll talk about his one. And since 2019, he got picked. I would have picked a handful of players ahead of him. And he did okay. And nothing stunning. And a lot of people, there was this little confrontation he had with the Burgess bros that I think kind of put him on that scale where it's like, oh, they need that aggressor. 2020, um, he had a good season last year, I do admit. I thought he was one of the more improved players in the comp. And why I am okay with his selection is he was probably the best forward from New South Wales last year. So that's why I'm okay with him getting picked. But I agree, like his form is, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll go. So I go back to Corner and Frizzell. So being in the back row this year is going to be Cameron Murray, who 2018, what I remember from him 2018 was kind of come off the scene. You could kind of seen a bit of emergence. I remember. Um, everyone kind of had him potentially getting into that team 2019, but yeah, I 2018, I definitely could have seen him making it just the way he was rising. Do you remember anything particular from Karen Murray in 2018? I think, wasn't that the year he still was starting sometimes on the bench because they had Sutton still? Yeah. Um, so he'd yeah. coming on and making a bit of an impact, and there was obviously some signs there that he was going to be quite a talent, and there was obviously a succession plan there with um, Sutton and, and South did that really well. Um, I don't think you could have predicted back in 18 that it would have become a, an origin player and, and basically a, a guy that was written in pen as soon as the, the oh, this time of year came up, really. So, um, but yeah, good on him. He's been, he's been good. Um, he's really good with that. Um, obviously, he's been more of a lock. So I'm going to be, I'm interested how he plays that second row edge player, but he does have some ball skills. So, Maybe it's going to be a good thing with these new rules and, and the games um, quickening up. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, man, for sure. Um, and on the other side is Tarek Sims, who made who had, has had an interesting career. I loved him as a rookie. He was one of my favourite rookies I loved watching back in 2011. He was playing for the Cowboys, but he went from going to be an origin player, dipped down, and was actually a really good story coming into 2018. And we talked about aggressors definitely there. He, yeah, he made his debut in game three. So not in game one, game three. And he's back here now, this year. Out of any of the selections, this is the one that shocked me the most. Um, let's forget, like, his journey from the three years. Like, 2018, what have you still thought? Yep, yeah, he's still, from making his debut in game three, you're still surprised he's there? Uh, this year? Yeah, this year. Uh, not, I, I was, um, and then I sort of looked into it a bit more and I sort of realised that New South Wales actually pretty shot this year for their, their back rolls. The, the untimely suspensions for Radley and, and Crichton have sort of put a mix to that and Frizzell was obviously going to be ahead of him, but then literally three minutes to go in that game, he's picked up an ankle injury, which is pretty... Uh, bad bad luck for, for Frizzell. So, and I believe that was why the, the teams were delayed in, in being selected for the Blues because they were trying to see if Frizzell would be right or not. So I guess he probably would have been maybe 18th man or off the bench, Harry, but with the, the injury, he's sort of just come in in that squad sort of development. And, yeah, it's, he's, he's been... when it, The one thing about Tariq is this year when I've watched the Dragons games, when they... Are playing well, he's generally one of the top players in the side. He's he leads it and he's really aggressive, and I think that's what the Blues need. But my only worry is with him when the Dragons do play poor and they're not getting the run of the green, um, rub of the green, he sort of does disappear a little bit, um, doesn't really do much, and he can 
with these new rules um, and be a bit guilty of giving away a hydro or two. So it could become a bit of a liability. But at the same time, Freddie had his hands sort of behind his back with this one. And there was sort of probably, his, I said yesterday, I thought he'd probably be about fifth or sixth in the pecking order. And that just shows where the Blues are at, at the moment. First time in a while. This time last year, everyone was saying how good our back row stocks were um mm. now it's completely the opposite it's a bit it's a bit slim at the moment and that's it just we'll get the coins in later but broad broadly australia too i, I find as well um just to touch on that point about tarot terms i completely agree and it's the reason why um i was hesitant to throw to be the Pangaea juniors name in the mix too just that tarot sims footage of him tackling Ben Hunt, when he was at marker, I'm not too sure. I think it was game three to when he made his debut. And I believe Queensland scored off the next set or definitely changed my mix of the game. So that stuff scares me. But, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of avoid – we'll gloss over a bit of the Jack DeBellin story. We won't go too much. But I just want to say about Jack DeBellin, it's good to see him back in the footy park. And I want to be interested if we go 12 months in the future, if we're talking about Jack DeBellin, DeBellin in the mix again. Um, and Jake Dvojevic – you know, he was um, he was a guy that um, he's a guy that we haven't mentioned yet. He was he's coming off the bench, but he's gone to number eight. I'm not surprised he's there today, and I'm sure you're the same there. Um, Isaiah Yo will touch on 2018. Isaiah Yo was still playing on the edge, you know, and he was a notable like he was a solid role player. You could not question his. His ability to be in first grade and add, add winning, but I don't think I'd be talking about him as a Dallium lock of the year and probably the form lock of the competition right now. Um, I wouldn't have thought he'd be in the Origin mix. I thought if he was a Queenslander, he'd be he'd be there. You know, like just because of the the depth we talked about. But yeah, Isaiah, yo, three years ago, what 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 are your thoughts? Um, yeah, as you pointed out, uh, touched on, he, he was uh, on the edge for, for Penrith, but you never would have predicted, um, obviously, the, the rise that has happened. But obviously, to touch on how he's been this year, and as you said, it's hard to argue that he has been up there. And the thing is that there has been a lot of good locks this year. like, um, And that just shows that some of the players missing out are out of position, just how good he's been playing and um, deservedly Deservedly there, deservedly there in his, his position. And I'm um, looking forward to see what he does. That Penrith combinations and connections are a must, and they needed to have at least four or five for mine in there. And they've done that. And they're just, they bleed success at the moment. Everything they touch just turns to gold. And you need to get those sorts of boys around these camps. Yeah, no, nah, but yeah, I completely agree with that, with that statement. Um, was this, and now we'll, we'll go to, yeah, the, the bench from 2018, as we touched on, um, Jake Dvojevic, Crichton, we've already touched on. Crichton would probably be, well, definitely would have been in, in there, you know, probably the best second row in New South Wales. Um, actually, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm sure you agree on that one. So, Peach and Vaughan and the guy's not in here anymore. Um, instead, we have got on that bench, um, we have got Junior Paulo, who we've touched on already, being in there. Um, don't think I would have. He was at the Raiders 2018. I think he just, I believe, um, his name was one of those ones like Safidi was brought up when he probably wasn't like warranting the, his form wine to that selection. Do you remember that? Where his name kind of used to get brought up in the origin mix and it was more like the idea of Paulo was good rather than his form? Yeah, he was... He was always big on playing for Samara, and I think he was one of the names originally that started the whole debate about letting him play both and, and things like that. Um, he's very proud of his Samoan uh, heritage, and I think he be and I believe he still wants to play for them at the World Cup, things like that. So, um, yeah, he, he was sort of at that time. I don't think he was taking his footy, footy as seriously as, as he probably should have. Um, he was obviously, I don't think he realised how good he could be either. So he's worked really hard the last couple of years to get his fitness up, his, his body shape right, his motor going and um, well-deserved. Uh, I probably would have started him. I don't know if he's a, a 
bench player, but I can understand sort of why they've done that as well at the same time is the new rules have him come on when there's a bit of tiredness around the ruck and he has does have a bit of footwork and a bit of offloading for a big man. So uh, it might be a good way to go about it. And um, touching on the bench from obviously 2018, obviously Vaughan and Peachy, as you said, are the ones that have missed out. And I can understand Vaughan. Vaughan hasn't been great. A um, bit down with the... I think if this side was selected after round four or five, it would probably be in the side. Um, and then just with the Dragons, they've just gone downhill uh, and done the slide, which normally happens, but it's happened pretty early this year. And Peachy, I think he, this is the game where he only played like five minutes or something. Um, I, mean, I, I, can't... I remember in game two when they'd won the series, he was the one with the ball in his hands. But I can't. Yeah, I can't actually remember what he did in particular in the game. I just remember the footage of when they ultimately, in you know, the final whistle blew, he had the ball in his hand, didn't tackle near the end goal. But um, he's funny, like what you said about Paul Vaughan. Peachy's name definitely, like, could be thrown in the mix. And depending on what happens in game one, you could look for him or Connor Watson type to potentially be there. And we'll talk about Tyron Peachy's journey just quickly. He hasn't had a great two years. They if, like when I talk about the idea of a player, like we like the idea of a mobile 13, you know, but he just hasn't quite delivered this year. We've started to see kind of that promise, you know, what we expected. And it's been great to see. So he's in he would bring an interesting element to this blue blues team. Um, yeah, what do you, what do you make of um Tyra Peachy 2018 version and now the 2021 version? Well, he fell asleep for about two years there uh, and didn't do much. Um, he has come back. Um, he has come back. He actually is playing pretty decent this year at lock. He's made that position his sort of own and um, not a bad not a bad uh, year so far. Um, he's, he's an interesting one. I don't know if I'd have him in the side or in sort of the frame at the moment. I, obviously, they wanted Pappenhausen there as that 14 and he's obviously had issues of, um, put a put pain to that. I don't really like Whiten there. I don't think Whiten does too much in that role for the new rules and anything. I think he's off really out of form as well. Um, so I think that that's that 14 position. I think that's one where they've actually got it wrong. The Blues and that's probably my biggest question mark so far. If I look at the teams and obviously one player doesn't make a make a game, but the Maroons look much more dangerous and we'll touch on them soon with. Grant it, say, running a 14 if he does that. And we've got, what, Whiten to come on and some somehow play something. I'm, I'm guessing he's going to probably be a running 13 for a 15, 20-minute period, but he's never played that role before. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting one for mine. I don't really like it. No, it's interesting. I thought the exact same thing. I had Cody Walker in mind because I, I was quite impressed with Cody Walker last year when he came off the bench. And I think they just focused too much on worst case scenario if players get injured and, you know, his ability to shift that I would have looked for a nippier guy, but let's just touch on Wyden in terms of 2018. Raiders had a great 2016 and they dipped and Wyden was currently playing fullback in 2018. Since then, he moves his number six, Clive Churchill medalist in, in that season. He obviously made his origin debut and shifted from, he did play the bench for a bit and he threw a vital into set. We might touch on that, but then played brilliantly in the centres. 2020, how could he get any better? Well, controversial, but he won the Dally in. So it's crazy to think how his is actually most interesting, actually, like in terms of what's happened in that, that three year period. But I do, even though, you know, this gave him all his flowers. I do agree with his with his you know selection there, and he was always a guy that was made for Origin, even when he was at the fullback level. But another guy that I didn't think his form was ever going to get to that stage. Are you surprised that he's from? If you look back from twenty eighteen, that he is now playing his third Origin series. Yeah, well, I know I used to know one or two players that played back at the Raiders, and he used to tell me that he wasn't the most. Um, I don't know the best way to put this, but his head it. wasn't really wasn't really in the game. He was more of a um, bit of on the party side and, and the chicks side of things and that sort of thing. So I think his head's screwed on a lot more now. Um, he doesn't want to be the, the class clown and he has a 
real purpose with his footy. Like, I, I hope he, he does a, a job. I just don't know where he fits. That's, all, that's my only question mark in this side. Yeah. And we'll just touch on um, with Liam Arden, probably similar to Brian Toto and his his mate, also Jerome Luai, has since had part. I think Luke Lewis was still in the frame for the Penny, Penny Panthers in 2018, so he was behind them. And Payne Haas, I believe he... Obviously, he had a great rookie year, 2019, and I think he was one of those guys you, you heard a little bit of hype around him. But I remember watching his first game, uh, ever in first grade, and I was like, yeah, I get he's an athlete, but he just looks a bit slow. I don't know if you know Zion Williamson in, in um, the NBA, but he's he was just this one-of-a-kind athlete we'd never seen before. And it's like, how is this guy going to translate to the big time? You know, I understand the hype, but... Yeah, there's a bit of a physical issue, um, but God, he's the he is just is like a you know he's able to play downhill and yeah he's even though his size looks like sometimes can be you know pull him back he definitely knows how to use it to his advantage. So do you remember a bit of the pain Haas hype at all? Yeah, Payne's obviously um, back then he was still just a kid, um, but. It was basically as soon as he made first grade, people just said it's a matter of time before he makes the blue side. And he did that. He probably was a bit gun shy when he first made his debut in the Origin Arena. Um, he got, I think he was a bit overawed by the, the situation and wasn't ready. I think age wise, that, that was mentally more than anything. Um, this time, I think he's hungry. He's got some things he's done in the past and mentally more stronger. Um, and he's ready to probably rip in and, and uh, really give it to the, the Maroons. And I guess having him and Paulo fresh after 20, 25 minutes in an Origin Arena um, is a pretty scary bench. Uh, I don't think many people want to be around trying to tackle those two after they've got 20 minutes of Origin fatigue in their their bodies. That's a, a scary sight and, and I'll pass on that. Yeah, yeah don't worry. I'll be, you won't be the only one in that camp, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> You know, we'll, we'll move into the Queensland team now. And let's just touch on, I'm seeing a name here, Michael Morgan, fullback. And crazy to think, this 2018 season is off the back of that. One of the more iconic individual runs in terms of just form in 2017 final series. Obviously, Flynn fullback, because she he showed his versatility a lot at origin level and Billy Slater was ruled out this match and but I don't think we'd be seeing, you know, fullback origin 2018 to retired 2021. Um, I feel like we got in a bit of a somber mood there, but yeah, just overall, <laughs> I'm looking at, that's why I really wanted it's, to do this three years. Like, yeah. wouldn't have, I would have, honestly, there would have been probably not 2018, but 2017. If we were saying Michael Morgan was the best player in 2021, there would have been people that would have predicted that in 2017, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. He, so he would have, he would have been up there with. At this time, he was the the apprentice, and basically, I think this is the year Thurston did retire, or it was maybe the year before. Um, he, but he retired from Origin for this was like 2017. Obviously, had the injury, and everyone was real excited for 2018. Like yeah. they made the finals without JT, and then. Obviously, they've, they had a three-year run without making the finals, so they've been a bit disappointing, yeah. Yeah, so they, they had massive wraps on him, and he was the, the next thing for the Cowboys to lead that side for, for years to come. So a bit, I guess, yeah, a bit, bit disappointing how it ended for him all of a sudden, and I, I think people forget how good of a player he actually was. Um, he was really good, and he was a, a freak of a player. Yeah, and the guy that's come in for him is Kaan Ponga, and I think it's safe to say no surprises there in this because if you don't remember, he made his debut off the bench in game two and was outstanding. One of the more fa- like memorable origin debuts, and yeah, he slots into four back. So yeah, no, you know, no surprises there. Twenty eighteen, he was runner up in the Delhi M two. Go to the wingers, Valentine Holmes, Dane Gagai, obviously both in the side today. Both players that perform at origin level. Um, Dane, so it's not surprising they're still there, but Valentine Holmes, let's get to his story. His journey is more interesting than, than most here. <laughs> Had a crack at yeah. the foul, and um, this is still, and a lot of credit to him. Like, obviously, it didn't work out there, but to get back into his side, yeah, what are you just looking at, looking at from that perspective? What are your overall thoughts there? Well, it's the first part that was crazy was that. 
if you looked at that that year and someone told you Bell was going to leave the Sharks, you thought you know, they had absolute rocks in the head because he was just part of that club, the culture. It seemed like everyone loved him, wanted to play for him, and then obviously he had a dream and, and chased it and um, went over to the NFL, which no one would have predicted at the time either. And he was at the height of his powers. He was playing Origin. He was starring. He was the best winger in the comp um, by a country mile uh, this year. And he was just freakish. He was doing finishes that uh, obviously regular to do these days, but he was probably one of the first to, to introduce the sort of finishes that we're seeing now. And he was quick. He was really quick back then. I know he's probably come back and doesn't have all the speed that he used to have, but um, he's got a lot better now of his passing game. He's, but obviously now he's still on the wing. So, um, and obviously I think gay guys now, um, in the center position, isn't he? For, yeah. yeah. So yes. he's changed a little bit. He's gone to his preferred center position, um, gay guy. But um, yeah, Combs is a great winger when he's fully fit. He hasn't been fully fit for a while. He's finally there, and um, his carries out of um, the backfield are going to be a worry for the Blues. Yeah, no, for sure. And just to touch on Holmes, like that season, actually he transitioned to fullback the year before. He scored 11 tries in two games for Kangaroos. But that year, if there was any run of form that was most impressive, it was Valentine Holmes in that little stretch at the back end where he was just some type of level. So, yeah, to think that he had a crack and probably probably thought, I'm at the height of my powers. You look at it in a different perspective. The height of my powers, I better utilise this and, you know, see if I can make it, have a crack. Um Let's just go to the centres, which were Inglis and Will Chambers. We knew they probably weren't going to be there because of their age. And Will Chambers, actually both of them still playing today. Obviously, Greg Inglis, who just suffered a pretty major injury over in the Super League. And Will Chambers, who would have thought, playing for the Cronulla Sharks. Who would have thought that? <sighs> Crazy that he absolutely hated. They, they had a massive rivalry at this time. And, yeah, I don't think he would have even thought <laughs> three years' time he's He's pulling on the sky blue jersey of, of the Cronulla Sharks. That's yeah, that is ridiculous. And I think it didn't English get injured in this series as well, so he only got well, to captain the one game or something. So pretty pretty sad for him as well. So he was named captain this this series, and everyone was talking about it. And he was so excited, and the players were, and then he sort of succumbed to to an injury. I think. Yeah, he played two games. I remember that game one performance. You know, he's had better performances at Origin, but. I remember there'd been a big debate if Inglis or Slater were going to be captain. Obviously, Inglis got picked even when, before Slater got injured. I just remember him putting shots on. He was just leading from the front. This was actually, yeah, I remember this game very, very, very well, actually, when he was putting shoulders. I think he um, flattened Tommy Turbo. Um, yeah, no, good, good point. And yeah, this was his, this was his, on our last. His last season was 2019, I believe. It's, obviously, it's quite hard to kind of keep track of when everyone retired. But, yeah, we'll get on to Kurt Capewell as one of the centres. Um, and we'll talk about Xavier Coates because, obviously, gay guys um, slots to, to centre. Kurt Capewell, don't think he would have been there 20, in 2018. I'm just looking it up now. He was 2016 debut for the Sharks and probably – in the sense of Isaiah Yo, but even down a peg in the sense of, yeah, probably quality player, but, you know, you, he's going to be in first grade for a long time, but, yeah. Fringe first grader, I think, at this time. So. Yeah, he was, and to, yeah. think, to think I don't, you know, last year a lot of his selection was probably due to the deck issues. This year, well and truly, like, has deserved it. He has been incredible, and um, honestly, and we talked about second row depth. Obviously, he's kind of shuffling to the centres, if he's in the kangaroo squad at the end of the year, I wouldn't be too surprised. Yeah. It's an interesting one because I feel like if Maroons were almost full strength last year, he doesn't get a, doesn't get a look in. Uh, no. So we don't actually see how good he can be at that, that stage and in that position. And then this year, well, I guess with how Penrith are going, he may have found a, a bench spot. But obviously with everything that happened in the last six months and the injuries that the Maroons have and, and sort of still have now and and – some of their players are still – they can't select. But, um, yeah, now he's probably one of the first picked in that side just because of how good he was um, in last year's series. Yeah, and then, yes, Xavier Coates, my first memory of him was in 2019, scoring a 
quite of a, a flower like you know jump up jump up and score type try which is quite impressive and I guess when we talk about depth depth spot obviously 2018 I haven't heard of him but if I look at 2019 I probably thought yeah maybe he gets in there just because I just think yeah Queensland always do struggle but yeah, no memories of Xavier Coates or his name even being mentioned before now. But he's um one of those guys that um yeah definitely look, definitely didn't look out of place last year. Yeah, he's one of those guys that just shot on the scene really. Um, I'm a bit worried about him at the wing, and I'm a bit worried about Toe if he's defending him because there's a massive size difference, and Coates is a freak under the high ball. So, um, but that's yeah. what that's what ultimately had Tupo in my team and. Yeah. This comes from like one of the biggest Brian Toe fans. Like I've been on a couple <laughs> of podcasts with you and I've talked him up quite a bit. And I was on those guys at the start of the year. I wouldn't have been surprised by this. I've been really impressed by Brian Toe. I think he is like the modern day winger, but that height advantage does scare me, especially when Tubo, it's not like he had like a Blake Ferguson drop off like last year. Yeah. Like, you know, Blake Ferguson definitely, you, you just couldn't deny. He just was not the same. And, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if Blake Ferguson actually didn't have that year last year and he kind of just kept the same because he might still be in the mix because of just, you know, having that spot locked up. But we'll get we'll get to the half now. We'll quickly move along. Um, Munster, not surprised. Ben Hunt. And I remember at the time it was Ben Hunt or Daly Chew Evans. Ben Hunt was playing better footy or the Dragons were playing great footy. And ultimately, this looked like Daly Chew Evans could have altered, like if Daly Chubbins had not played State of Origin again, I wouldn't have been so, too surprised. He ends up playing in a dead rubber in game three and was one of the better players in the match, and they won. And now he's the, he's the captain. Let's talk about that, the Ben Hunt, Daly Chubbins kind of battle. Uh, the thing about, I don't know. The, I, I'll go on record, I'll say it. I don't, I don't rate Cherry Evans as highly as what some people do. Um, I don't rate Ben Hunt either. Uh, I, but in saying that, um, Ch- Cherry Evans for mine is it plays well when he's got some good players around him. So when he's got Turbo uh, there controlling it and, and being the guy that is the main main centerpiece, he does well because he plays off the back of that. I don't think Cherry Evans can handle being the, the maestro and being the conductor. Um, I don't think. That's his natural style of play. So he's going to rely a lot on Tonga. Uh, he's going to rely a lot on Munster. So he's lucky he's got those two in the side, which should play into his hands and he'll do well. But um, I've noticed in the past, um, in series gone past and things like that, where the going gets tough, he sort of does disappear a little bit. Um, so, uh, look, I don't think he's a $1.2 million price tag player, but... Um, Good on him for his for his rise. Um, he's done well. Um, he's he's there now. He's captain. Congratulations on that. Um, probably well deserved. Um, but yeah, it's it's an interesting one. They don't really have much halfbacks running around at the moment, anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. They, like... they will in probably they probably will in a year's time. Once um, there's a guy at the Roosters that are, that's probably going to be snapping at his heels very very quickly in Sam Walker. So. Oh, I was gonna, I was gonna get slots on Lamb, eh? I was. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, he's probably gonna have another year or two, Cherry Evans, and then it'll be Walker's time to shine. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I think that's a great point. I think yeah, the the half belt stocks have been interesting. I, it's one of those things like you, I kind of like I, I don't. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, and I I do agree to a point. But then when you compare them, the other half backs. There's still a legitimate shot. Like, would he be the next best halfback after Nathan Cleary? You know, you, you throw Mitchell Moses, Jerome Hughes. Does he kind of be helped by being in just a storm system? And, you know, it's one of those tough ones to halfback position, but it was clear. It's clear. Cleary, who is number <laughs> one. Sorry, the panel had to. I just couldn't help it. Had, had to be there. Head to it's clear that Nathan Cleary is number one by by a landslide at the moment. Um, Dylan Napper and Jared Wallace will be props in this in this one. Um, and currently, you know, you could argue they were kind of in the conversation. Wallace definitely was in the conversation. I have never been impressed with him at Origin level. And Napper's just look, he was one of those guys. I was never on the Napper hype machine. I thought he gave you 
some impact for very short stints, and I mean very short stints. Um, and Andrew McCulloch was your hooker. So instead, the front row um, this this series is Reed Reed Marnie, and also Jai Arrow, who was on the bench and has merged as one of our more important props. And the other prop is now Christian Welch. So let's, let's talk about that. Jared, um, Jai Arrow, probably the one, obviously, that's not the biggest surprise because he was there. Um, Reed Marnie, 2018, the Parramatta Eels were wooden spoons, weren't they? Just to bring that up. And Reed yeah, Marnie, yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> tried, to, tried to forget that. <laughs> and Reed, but Reed Marnie wasn't even, he was kind of just played a few games here and there, I believe. Yeah, I think he did. I think that was his sort of year Thanks. where they realised that um, that was a salary cap year, I'm pretty sure. So Pete's left halfway through and they sort of started to bring uh, Marnie through. And honestly, I can't wrap him enough. I'm a bit gutted we lose him this weekend because we actually need him. We need to win. But uh, going off origin, um, he, he deserves it, I think. If the Maroons go the way I think they'll go, there's still people out there saying that Grant will end up starting. But if I'm them, I'm starting with Reed, letting him take the first 20, 30 minutes. Um, he will be a tackling machine. He'll give good service um, while doing that. And once that happens, once the game opens up a bit, then you bring Grant on um, at, at the 14. And I'm very worried about Harry Grant. He's a freak. Uh, as soon as there's some tired players around, which he's going to get, he would just be nipping around and then probably at the back half of the second half, they'll bring Reed back on and they'll play, probably play two hookers and they'll just have both of them just going in the middle and, and smashing that the tide forward. So there's some worrying signs there if you're a Blues fan, but if you're a Maroons fan, it's a very exciting combination. Yeah, for sure. And just we'll touch on Harry Grant now. I remember his name kind of... I was talking to my mate about this the other day and I knew about Harry Grant height but I kind of just ignored it after a while because his name got brought up so often and for years and for years like I just thought he was starting to become a myth <laughs> like, who is this guy and I'd see and then he might play a couple game games and obviously I didn't expect him to take the world by storm but I just didn't really pay any attention to him so like I'm not really surprised he's there because of how much his name was brought up but to to still be like, uh, oh, I'm a guy that I really think he is probably the best hooker in the game now. And I think he's got a bit more creativity from compared to Cook and does better when his your know, Cook's pretty reliant on his four-pack rolling. And that's a different story. But, yeah, I, I'm not too surprised that he's there because his name, not that I'd seen him play much, but just the, the hype around him. Um, I was, think in the hooking, in the hooking sta- um, comparisons, Maroons have definitely got a massive leg up there. Cook hasn't been great this year. There's been question marks and Queensland have probably got two of the, the informed hookers um, at their disposal, which is really dangerous. Yeah, the, the Coruscant selection is interesting too on the 18th. It could be a real kick in the ass for Damien Cook and a bit of a master stroke for Freddie just to just to show Cook, hey, your, your spot is on the fine, man. So we've, we've got a very handy replacement there and a guy that has played alongside five of our players in that team with in those connections with the Panthers players will be very vital well, to what he gets picked to. Just, just quickly, I know we've, we've gone past the Blues, but I actually would have done what the, the Queenslanders have done. And I would have named Coruscant starting hooker and I actually would have had Cook on the bench and I would have brought Cook on to, to play a bit of running, just to focus on his running game. That's obviously his strength. And once there's some tired players to come on in that 30-minute mark and and sort of run a bit of a muck for, for a 20, 30-minute period and bring Coruscant back on. That way you've got another Panthers combination in there. Um, and I just feel like Cook's biggest strength is his running game. So let him get out of that tackling at the start uh, and come on. So I just think Maroons are going to do that really, really well. And it's, got, it's my biggest worry at the moment. Yeah. No, and actually I thought about that too. And, and I probably, even though I said that Widen was kind of picked because the versatility, I think... Ultimately, would have gone. I would have just gone Walker over Kosa just because I still think he brings a lot of yeah that nippy nippiness. Obviously, in a different area of attack, and also it, it gives him a little bit more versatile options. But hey, Kosa can play half if need be. But yeah, Walker can go to fullback. So 
Yeah, and it's one of those things that they're a 90 man squad. So they can, I think technically they can still make changes, like if need be, because they've been announced in the squad. Um, the back row, Kafusi, who's still there, not too surprised with that. And we talk about the depth of Queensland, one of those guys that, yeah, once he's in there at a young age, it's probably pretty hard for him to get out. And he's definitely probably one of the better right second rows in the comp. Gavin, Gavin Cooper and Josh McGuire were, you know, Gavin Cooper's retired now. Josh McGuire is a, you know, veteran of such. And instead in their place now, we have got, um, we've got David Fafita. Yeah, like, obviously the first, as as you know, we all know, the first player to debut in the NRL as in the year 2000s. Um, but I don't think I heard of his name in 2018. I'm trying to think. Nah, and... I can't remember it. Yeah, but, yeah, if we look a year on, definitely wouldn't have been surprised he was on that team. And in the lock position, um, we have got... Um, Big Tino. Big Tino, sorry. Um, similar, similar to Fafita as well. A guy that I think I've I probably heard his name, definitely not 2018, but it just shows, it shows just, um, yeah, definitely like we, we talked about, this is kind of the start of the new year, 2018 was, and for Queensland probably still had a Stuart veteran, veterans kind of in, you know, in the, in the, um, in the side. But yeah, and now it's really we're seeing the emergence of of their team. So Tino and Fafita, obviously, we we're not surprised in the squad now, but because we we, we would have been surprised in twenty eighteen, just because those names hadn't even heard of them. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, and we've got Papali, Hiss, Arrow, who we touched on, and Milford on the bench. Obviously, Papali's injured would be in the side. Karen Hiss has had an interesting journey. We would have expected him to be a certainty. And this team, would you agree? In 2018, like, yeah, he is a big part of the Maroons four pack. I definitely would have thought of. Yeah, yeah, no, 100. I, I, I liked Hess. Um, he's sort of gone away a little bit, but he has shown a bit, bit of glimpses this year. Um, he is slowly getting back to to what he's capable of. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and Milford, you know, less said about. Him. Less said about that um, player at the moment, the better. I think. Yeah, I think we'll that make... is a massive fall of gra- fall from grace. That is, yeah. Just, <laughs> we'll make know. we'll make an executive decision there and just pass on that one because honestly, <laughs> I love Anthony Milford. He was one of my favorite. He was my second favorite player in the league when he was playing um, for the Raiders off the bench. I loved him from the get go, and yeah, he's he got, overall he's you know he's a lot better career than probably publicised, but. Just the, the the expectation, or just the he should be in his prime years now. What's the level of that? What's the level of that? Um, so yeah, instead, we yeah, on the bench, obviously, we touched on Harry Grant. Um, we have got Joe Offhand Gary off the bench as well. We have got Jaden Sewer, and we've got Mo Fotoaka. Joe Offhand Gary and the Joe Offhand Gary was part of the Bay, part of the Broncos in 2018, I do agree. Um, probably name, actually, if at a time, obviously, it's quite hard in hindsight, but I think I definitely wouldn't have been surprised because I didn't knew, I think his name was even probably briefly mentioned in 2019 he played, so not too surprised. But in terms of Foto I think made his debut in 2019. Straight away, I think he was club player of the year and a wooden spoon team. And um, Jaden Stewart. Yep, no. Hadn't heard of Jaden Sewell yet. No, he was he was at the Broncos, I believe, and there was, was sort of yes, true, a li- li- little bit of hype around him. But he came with Bennett. I think that was the year Bennett left him or something, and then he went to South. So, um, or maybe it was 2019. But uh, he was yeah, he was at the Broncos, sort of an edge back row, a baby Bronco back then. But interesting how he gets selected now. He's just spent what a week or uh, in New South Wales Cup, so. And got dropped from South. So um, interesting. You don't normally see that. It's like back in the old days where teen, um, Queensland or New South Wales would pick someone from New South Wales Cup and bring them up for it. So um, an interesting one is it a sign that they don't have much depth or is it just a sign that he's been there, done it before last year, and they just want to repay the faith? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I'm just trying to think. There was a notable player a couple of years back, I think it was the Blues, that 
played New South Wales Cup, uh, New South Wales Cup in May, but it's just completely escaped my mind, eh? And I, I don't know if it was a, no, it wouldn't have been a half. I doubt it would. It wasn't a Maloney or anything like that. But um, yeah, it was on those ones where Jane saw when I saw it. You know, he wasn't in the team. I kind of ruled him out for state of real origin this year. And I think in my team, I had Cohen Hiss there, but I do think Cohen Hiss is actually best used in the middle. So I like Jane Sewell being there on the edge and. I think he should be just a little bit disappointed on how his 2021's gone. Um, overall, um, I thought it'd be, he would have been a smoker to be a Dallium second row of the year. Um, hey, so I think we'll leave on that. And it was a bit hard jumping back and forth. So it's be for me, it's good to kind of do a bit of tinkering for when I do this kind of idea in the future. But overall, I really enjoyed looking at the 2021 lineup from a three year three-year perspective along with the 2018 team as well so um two old teams i should i should say um joel thank you for coming on man and um yeah any last any final thoughts no no worries mate thanks for having me again luke and uh, appreciate it can't wait for the game next week and um yeah be in touch be in contact we'll do some things and Really looking forward to it. There's good stories, and I've got no doubt in another three years' time we'll look back on this side and think, wow, what, what was that player doing? And there'll be other ones. There'll be the walkers and stuff will be coming through, and they'll just be superstars. So there was question marks when Queensland were losing all their greats, but I'll tell you what, they've got a good bunch of youngins coming through, and so do the Blues. I think it's, the series is going to get stronger and stronger. Yeah, no, great. And just... Probably real, real briefly, off the top of my head, any Smokies for the 2024 Origin teams? Uh, I don't, obviously, it's not a Smokie, but Sam Walker's got to be there. Um, yeah. he'll, he'll definitely be there. Um, uh, for a New South Wales point of view, geez, you, you've got me right. Uh, probably Stefano Udakamano from the, the Tigers will probably be up there and might get a, a prop spot by then once he's developed his game a bit more and um, gone from there, or or it's going to be probably half the most dependent side. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. They're all young still, uh, and probably Crichton should make a, a name for himself in one of the center positions. Yeah, now I'm going to say Walsh won't be in there, he'll be buying, playing for New Zealand instead. Touch wood, yeah. <laughs> as a kid, yeah. now nah, it's one yeah. of those double swords. Like, obviously, it's even Maroons, a Maroon supporter, or Kiwi, so I might be disappointed, but. Um, Keylon will be a name, I think, is from under um, Rabbitohs that will be in the Origin yeah. mix. And Matt Burden and Jerome Luai will be fighting for that number six spot. That will be very interesting in a couple of years. Yeah. I didn't see Luai have to shift to 14 or play hooker. Something, something yeah. weird. So, yeah, hey. Burns shown he can do it at centre, so we'll see what happens. Exactly, exactly. All right, man. All right, team. We'll leave it there. Thanks once again, Joel. And if you haven't already, please check out League of Inches. He's doing great stuff over there. And um, I'll catch you guys next week. Cheers, team.